I love this beach. One of my earliest memories is here. I'd been learning about Treasure Island in school, so my mum brought me here for an ice cream and we spoke about how great it would be to seal the seas, like in the book. So this first bit, it's setting the scene. You've got a guy on the beach talking about a relationship with his mother. But there's a few little subtleties in here as well. First of all, he's talking about something that he did in the past as a child with his mother in response to something he was doing at school. What I was trying to do here is very quickly in a short one or two sentences give the audience an idea of what the story is going to be about. In this case it's going to be about a relationship between a young adult male and his mother and also a little bit of an idea about what sort of relationship they had. So here this guy obviously was went to school, was learning school but the mother took a, an active role in getting to know what he did at school and she tried to encourage him to encourage him to learn and also the lack of lack of father figure that she hasn't mentioned to dad it's all my mother brought me down my mother taught me this uh, told me this so he's just talked about his mom and again it's given an idea that a life has uh, happened outside of this it's a similar technique that's used in the cutaways in family guy where they give the idea that the cartoon characters have a life outside of that little 20 minute cartoon which of course they don't because the cartoon characters but by saying uh, this reminds me of a time when it gives the, the, the audience a, a very subtle prompt to think that these characters have a life outside of this film, which they don't, it's a fictional film. So that's what, that's what this is all about. And we found this really old looking bottle with a note inside. I was really excited to open it. Water had got in the bottle, so when we did open it, the note just kind of turned to mush. But my mum said that she had a friend from work who had some magic ink and that would be able to make the note readable again. A couple of days passed and my mum came home with a note and it was like new. It was written from a boy in America who was the same age as me. And he was also called Stephen. <laughs> I was buzzing. Now this is quite an important bit. The only way that the audience knows that this guy's called Stephen is by the title. I wanted to avoid him saying, Hi, I'm Stephen, and then go into the story. That, that certainly tells the audience that you've only just met this character, which of course they have only just met this character. When you start watching the film, they've only watched you know, 57 seconds into the film. But by him saying, and he was also called Stephen, what I was doing there was a subtle way of kind of making like the audience, it's telling the audience that this is Stephen, and they've always known that it's Stephen. I wanted to avoid the, hi, I'm Stephen. I needed to find another subtle way to let the audience know this guy's name and kind of trick them into thinking that they've known them all along. But the other subtlety there was the, the using the term magic, magic ink. And what I wanted to do, which for people who've seen the film in its entirety, you'll know that it kind of takes you down one path and then halfway through it takes you to another path. What I wanted to do was bring the audience along and make them think the mother is the one who's writing these notes for them, which of course she is. If, I, if the script had just said, my mum had some, a friend at work who had some ink that would make them re not readable again. And that would kind of make the audience go, yeah, okay, whatever, she's doing it. But by using magic ink, again, that's making it really blatantly obvious that I want the audience to know that his mum is tricking him as a child, tricking the child version of Stephen into thinking that she's writing notes for him. Because that's the path I want to drag the audience down, only to spin it on the head, which you'll see in a second. <laughs> That night, me and mum, we sat down and we wrote a reply to him. We put it inside of a new bottle, and then the next day we came back down to the beach to send the message of the bottle back. From then on, mum, she would come home with new notes written from my American pen pal, and I'd write replies to send back to her to give to him, and... He always, always seemed to know the right thing to say. Like, when I was upset and confused about my dad leaving me, and running away with a secretary or when I got picked on at school for wearing braces the letters he wrote they always said the right thing it always managed to cheer me up right so this bit is the bit that I'm probably um, least proud of the main thing I want to get in there is that there is no father figure and that he was being bullied so there's two kind of things I want to get in there but again I want to avoid it being Stephen character saying I was getting bullied and dad's gone. The, su the, the subtle wording of it so when I was getting bullied at school for wearing braces, again it's given the, there's, a, there's a reason for it, there's, a, there's the specifics 
gives the audience the idea that there is a bigger scene here, there's a bigger picture. They now know a little bit more about Stephen. They can almost picture him as a child with braces getting bullied at schools. The one bit that I'm least proud of is the bit, the cheap shot, Dad ran away with the secretary. It's a bit too Hollywood, it's a bit too cliche. And looking back now, a few years later, looking back on this, this script, that's the one kind of bit which bugs us when I was thinking, you know what, I could have could have thought about something a little bit more creative there than just you ran away with the secretary. But yeah, so I, I would have probably done something else there. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's what that bit's for. It was about 12 when I realised that it was my mum went the next for me the whole time. I went mad and we had a fall out well. I slammed a few doors and didn't speak to her for the rest of the night. But looking back now though, that was a pretty awesome act of parenting to be fair. Especially considering the circumstances. So there's two quite important bits here. The pause. That's the moment where the audience has been getting pulled along this path. They made to think that this film's all about a um, mother who's writing notes for her son, which is the path I wanted to pull the audience down. But then by leaving that pause there and then coming in with a, I was about 12 when I found out, that is the moment where it turns the whole script on its head, it turns the whole story on its head. What I wanted was the audience to think, oh, that that was what I thought the reveal was going to be. Uh, so that was the important thing. The other important thing as well was a little bit going more into the relationship between him and his mother. The I slammed a few doors and didn't talk with the rest of the night and then the little laugh. It's kind of when you're a child and you have a fallout with a parent, it's a natural thing, it's going to happen, there's going to be, you know, when people get to teenagers. But he's actually looking, upon, looking back, a moment of conflict between him and his mother. But he's actually looking back on that with affection. And he's rolling his eyes a little bit, his behaviour, and thinking, you know, that was one of them things. What that is doing is it's subtly showing the affection and the strength of the relationship between him and his mother. That even when they've fallen out, they've fallen out because of love. Mum was back in hospital a few weeks ago, actually. There's something wrong with the pancreas. That's the, the small organ that fixes blood sugars or something. She's out now though. Listen, don't tell her this, but I actually kept the original bottle this whole time. I almost came close to smashing them when I fell out, but couldn't bring myself to it. I always knew it would come in handy, I just didn't know when. So that was another really important bit. This is the start of the new path. It's just been back in hospital again now. But the subtleties of that is the audience is kind of picking up on that as being a little bit more information about his mum. Um, she's been back in hospital, she's in and out of hospital. Again, it's pulling the audience down another, another path into the story that perhaps they weren't expecting. So the, listen, don't tell her this. I want the audience to feel like they know Stephen and they know his mum, and they always have done. Don't tell her this, you know her. Um, but also the other subtlety in there is saying that she's still alive to, to listen to it. Don't tell her this, she's, she's still around. If you've seen the film, of course, you'll know that she's not. in a bottle it's a powerful image in its own and it's kind of telling you what's happened that then brings the audience back down to making sense of the she's back in the hospital and then that also reminds the audience that no they don't actually know these people and when he said don't listen don't tell her this that's drilling into the kind of idea that once someone's died you can speak to them through prayer or something like that so again it's pulling the audience down another way and then that's the bombshell that's the reveal that his mum's been dead all along and this is what initially appeared as just a casual walk down the beach of a guy with a backpack chatting away and remembering his mum 
actually turned out to be a really major key moment in his life of where he's actually passing on his mother's ashes. It's actually a very key moment and a moment that he, this character, will remember for the rest of his life. Um, I, hope, I hope that helped. Um, I hope uh, anyone who's looking into getting the script writing or wanted to know a little bit of background behind the reasons for or the importance of subtleties in script um, found that useful. Uh, and in the meantime, while we're all stuck inside with this stay indoors coronavirus quarantine thing, I hope everyone stays safe, stays well and um, looks after themselves.